Hello and welcome back to another Before You Buy and today I want to talk about NAS hard drives. I want to tell you guys five very important things to bear in mind about network attached storage hard drives that you might want to know that may make you buy it or make you go, ooh, I'm not interested. So that's what I want to do today, talk about those five things, five very key buyers concerns for network attached hard drives or just NAS HDDDs. So the first one straight away is understanding the difference between regular and pro series hard drives. In fact, dare I say it, it's very important to know the difference between normal hard drives and NAS hard drives. Ultimately, it's about having a tool that is better suited to the job. So, if you look at normal hard drives, your standard Barracudi, a WD Blue, these are hard drives designed for PCs that boot up, boot down periodically, do a bit of WordPress, do a little bit of Microsoft Office, do a bit of Chrome, shut the lid, go. Those are standard, what is arguably a single drive use scenario. The reason NAS hard drives exist is because a lot of the time people need to have large amounts of storage. They have multiple drives working together in a RAID. Maybe in the case of a NAS, they're spinning up and spinning down periodically or randomly. And they'll be in systems that are on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, um, for 52 weeks a year, more and more and more. What I'm saying is uh, NAS hard drives are a tool that are designed for the job at hand in the same way. The cutlery drawer at home has several different kinds of knives, several different kinds of spoon. You're not going to use a ladle to eat a yogurt, are you? And you're not going to use a bread knife to eat your dinner. It's about having a tool that's best suited for the job. And when it comes to regular NAS hard drives and pro hard drives, the argument is still very much there because regular NAS hard drives are designed for what is arguably home, prosumer and small medium business SMB NASs. So that's up to about five or eight bays of storage. This is when they'll be dealing with RAID drives, but generally the storage requirements, the amount of capacity inside is at a certain level. And then they tailor the internals of the drive, the vibration sensors, heat sensors, uh, rotations per minute, cache and stuff like that to be more tailored towards that smaller or compact environment. And by small, I am comparing against rack mounts, 10 bays, 12 bays, 16 bays, 24 bays, arguably enterprise grade uh, architecture, ones where the vibrations high, the temperatures are higher, the drives have to perform higher for the demand, and they are in chassis and systems which have got arguably higher powered memory, CPUs, and more, and external connections to boot. So pro versus regular hard drives, is important because it isn't just about the price tag. Arguably, Pro Series drives are more expensive, but that's because of uh, high performing and more rugged internal hardware and longer warranties as a kind of guarantee of service against that architecture. But if you are going to be utilizing a NAS for more home concerns, you don't need to go for Pro Series drives, even on a, you know, a two, a four bay, whatever device. But conversely, if you are using a small NAS, you don't necessarily have to not go for Pro Series drives. Again, higher performance, um, a higher uh, a warranty available on day dot, higher cash. They are just better performing drives. So knowing the difference between regular and Pro Series drives is important when buying NAS hard drives because one way or another, you might end up buying drives that are not suitable to you, the end user, be it home or business. So make sure you bear that in mind before you buy your NAS hard drives. The next thing to bear in mind is, of course, speed. And I'm not just talking about how long it takes to watch a movie on your NAS or how long it takes for a VM to be responsive. Speed is measured in many different ways. And the reason I want to talk about speed in this video is a lot more to do with speed within a RAID. NAS hard drives, one of their defining characteristics is that they are to be utilized in a RAID array. That's multiple drives all working together and they're going to be on for long lengths of time. We've already touched on this, but a lot of the time, NAS hard drive manufacturers like WD Red, Seagate Iron Wolf, Toshiba NAS, and more, they advertise their drives to have a certain performance, normally in read and write performance and in megabytes per second. Now, this speed is basically for that single drive. So you might see regular hard drive, uh, regular NAS hard drives reporting about 160 to 200 odd megabytes per second transfer speed. Pro series drives, you generally find at your 240, your 250, up to about 270, I think is the current max, for NAS Pro series hard drives. But if you've got multiple drives in a RAID array, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever, it doesn't just take that speed of 250 megs and then go 250, 500, 750, 1000, it doesn't work that way. RAID configurations, depending on the one you choose, because they've all got their inherent advantages and disadvantages, each 
drive you add to the RAID array will improve the performance in read and writes across the majority of RAID configurations, but not adding the full performance. So if you're using regular uh, NAS hard drives, again, WD Red, Seagate, Iron Wolf, then you will generally get that figure of around 160 to 200 megs for the first drive, and then it will increase around 50 to 70 megs per drive you add. So for each drive you add will improve that performance. Now, that isn't a stone cold figure. The RAID configuration you choose, the CPU inside that NAS, and the number of drives maximum and the external uh, interface will make a difference. But generally, as a rule of thumb, regular NAS hard drives, you're looking at 50 to 70 meg with each added drive. Now, with Pro Series drives, it is slightly different. Pro Series drives, again, giving between 240 and 270 megs per second, they will add around about 80 to 120 megs extra per drive that you add. Again, the RAID configuration and the architecture of the NAS inside will make a difference, but bear in mind, the speed you're looking at for a NAS hard drive isn't just one drive at 200 megs, five drives equals 1,000. It's not that way. The drives in the RAID configuration and the architecture of the NAS will dictate the majority of the overall performance you're going to get from those drives. So know that about the speed and don't just do bog standard maths. You've got to think about the RAID and all the other bits in between. Another really important buying point for a number of you out there that are looking to populate a NAS with hard drives is about the difference between capacity and the number of drives. Conversely, the number of hard drives you put inside a NAS doesn't necessarily dictate that you're gonna get the most storage. In fact, some RAID configurations tailor more towards uh, safety and redundancy or a safety net than they do about capacity. A classic example being RAID 1, where you end up with two hard drives which are effectively the same data being read and written. Consequently, you're only going to get one drive worth of capacity because they're both using the same amount of data. Now, you can use this to your advantage to actually get more capacity for your money. Ultimately, more terabytes per pound or per dollar. So, in the case of, say, 8TB drives, a standard 8TB hard drive knocks around for about 170 to 175 quid. And that is vaguely on average between Sega Ironwolf and WD Red. And that's for 8 terabytes. Now, twice that, or a 16 terabyte drive, knocks around for about 350 to 360 quid. So, effectively double. Twice the capacity for twice the price. And you're thinking, well, that's fair and well. It's about the same price per terabyte. What's the problem? Well, if you get two 16 TB drives, you're going to be spending about 700 quid. And you're going to get 16 terabytes in that RAID 1 environment. You've got two 16 TB drives, at about 350 a pop, so you've spent 700 quid, but you're only going to get one drive of capacity. But if you bought 8 TB drives and you bought three 8 TB drives, that's going to cost you about 520, 530 nicker. But you are going to get, for the lesser money, 16 TB of storage in a RAID 5, because you've got three drives, one disk is redundancy, so you've got eight and eight. You've got 16 TB. So you've spent close to 200 quid less for the same storage. And that's important because when you're buying hard drives, if you're filling a four bay NAS, you can afford to buy smaller drives to get the same capacity as if you bought fewer of the bigger hard drives. Newer hard drives always seemingly arrive at a higher price tag. So if you're buying a two bay NAS, and you've got a certain budget and you're looking at bigger hard drives, all too often it's easier to scale down the hard drives, save a bit of money, and buy a 4-bay NAS rather than a 2-bay. And the same logic does apply to 4, up to 6-bay, up to 8-bay and more. So remember that when buying NAS hard drives, that there's a good chance that you can make a saving and improve the NAS, and that money can go into the CPU and memory and maybe 10G and more, by lessering the hard drives, but getting more hard drive capacity versus qu um, quantity. Bear that in mind. Another feature that so, so many people seemingly overlook when it comes to buying the hard drives in their NAS is about noise. I talk about on the channel at least once a week in one video or another. The noise of more enterprise-grade hard drives is 
noticeable. And I'm talking about the pros. I'm talking about Iron Wolf Pro. I'm talking about WD Red Pro. I'm talking about Ultra Star. I'm talking about Exos. I'm talking about Pro Series drives. Some Pro Series drives are noisier than others. But ultimately, regular hard drives do not make as much noise as Pro Series hard drives. And by noise, I mean clicks, hums, whirs, and vibration. That is because enterprise-grade hard drives are designed in a far more enterprise way. They've got a higher rotations per minute RPM. They have a higher cache to have more data pulling through them, which makes the arm and the actuator, that the arm that reads the platter, the mechanical rotating discs inside, make that clicks and hums and the whirs all together inside that. Moreover, more enterprise-grade hard drives in metal NAS chassis also amplify and multiply the noise even more so. So if you're in close proximity to a NAS or the NAS is on metal stanchion or wobbly furniture, it will amplify that noise dramatically. So you have to bear in mind that if you're going down the road of buying more Pro Series hard drives, because of their more enterprise and more rugged design, they will produce more clicks, hums and whirs, which could be amplified by the ambient hardware around them. So bear that in mind when choosing NAS hard drives from Pro or Standard classes. Finally, a point that I do highlight, I would say at least every three months, whenever I talk about anything to do with surveillance. If you're going to buy drives for a NAS and you intend to use that NAS for surveillance, CCTV, or as a standalone NVR network video recorder, then you should think about surveillance hard drives rather than NAS hard drives. Now, <clears throat> as a rule of thumb, I've always stated that if you're gonna use your NAS for both standard network attached storage data sharing and surveillance, go for NAS hard drives. And if you're gonna use it for 90% or above for surveillance, buy surveillance hard drives such as Seagate, Skyhawk, and WD Purple. The reason being that the surveillance and general NAS use, although at a glance seem the same, have actually very different processes internally. Now, surveillance hard drives are spending more than 90 to 95 percent of their time writing. They are connected to one or more cameras in your home or business environment. Each one of those cameras is sending a camera feed, sometimes multiple with um, multiple streams, all to the NAS, which is writing data constantly to the disk, just writing, writing, writing. Even if you have a rotational recording pattern where every two weeks the oldest data is written over by the new data, that just means the disks are constantly, constantly working, never idle, always writing. But from time to time, you'll get an alert on your phone, you'll check periodically what, what time Larry from the warehouse went home, one way or another, you're gonna access the NAS. That is that rare occasion comparatively, that you're reading, you are accessing the contents of those drives. Consequently, surveillance hard drives are designed with far, far more of their architecture leveraged and leaning towards write than they are read. And that's why surveillance hard drives, much like our point about tailored hard drives, are suitable for NASes in surveillance situations. Whereas NAS hard drives have a better balance of read and write, and not just read and write, but random access. And I mean random in a sequ uh, random and sequential data reading and general NAS access externally by connected users. What I'm saying is NAS hard drives have a better balancing act of read and write as needed, whereas surveillance hard drives, they tip the scales heavily towards write. So that's why you should look at how you're gonna use the NAS then buy the media, because you might buy the wrong media for your needs, and if you end up buying non-NAS suitable, uh, uh, sorry, non-surveillance suitable NAS drives for a NAS, then although it's not going to fall apart, those drives are not going to be geared perfectly to what you're trying to do, and you may have spent money in a way that would have been better with a little bit more thought for. But these are things to remember before buying NAS hard drives. If you've got any things that I've missed out on or maybe mistakes that you've made along the way that you think other people should know, let me in the comments. We can always do a follow-up. Click like if you enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description for the best NAS hard drives to buy for your needs. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.